Hi, this is uh, Scott Picard with Verde Property Management. And today's topic will be CRPs in the state of Minnesota. What is a CRP? What are the rules that I need to follow? Uh, who does it apply to? And of course, what are the penalties for non-compliance? So with that, I am going to share my screen and I've got a delightful PowerPoint presentation that I have put together. And okay, so certificate of rent paid in Minnesota. So if you're a landlord in the state of Minnesota, you have to be aware of this. And the, the point of the CRP form that you send out to renters is there's a belief that the tenants pay a portion of the property taxes. They're contributing a portion of their rent to the property taxes on the property that they're renting you know, indirectly. And they may be entitled uh, to a refund for this, uh, for this contribution. So the state of Minnesota uh, has come up with this program. And I, frankly, it's been around as long as I can remember, even when I was a renter back in the 90s. So when it started, I honestly don't know. Uh, not that that's that important today, but I will say it's been 30 years or more for sure. So uh, the renters, they use the CRP to apply for the property tax refund. Um, for them, they must file their form, uh, it's the MPR1, uh, by, by August 15th of, of this year, 2024, tax year 2019. So uh, what people don't realize is that homeowners are also eligible for property tax relief. And there's a couple different criteria there. We're not gonna get into it today. We're gonna to focus really on the renter piece. Uh, I will have a slide that talks a little bit about homeowners at the end. So um, the amount of the refund depends on the, uh, how much property tax was paid, uh, the income, and then how many dependents. So with that, um, so CRP guidelines, if you own or manage a rental property and rent living space to someone, you must provide them with a CRP. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys really quick. Well, we'll see how quick. Uh, we'll, we'll hold off on that, uh, what the form looks like. But um, you must provide a CRP of the following, if, if any of the following are true. Your property tax was payable on the property. Um, if the property was property tax exempt, but you made payments in lieu of property taxes, you still have to provide this. If you're not paying property taxes and you're not making payments in lieu of, i.e. the property is tax exempt, and you're not making any payments in lieu of that, uh, you may not have to issue a CRP. And, and the reason I say may not is you know, I always, I'm not giving you tax advice. I'm not even, I'm not your property manager. I'm not operating as an agent. So I want you to verify this. If you want to have a, you know, a confidential conversation about your situation with me and see if I can help you, that's great. Um, my number is 612-600-8888. It's, it's all over on these slides. And again, I'm Scott Picaric. So um, for nursing homes, and, and, and we get in the weeds real quick here. When we start talking about nursing homes, foster care homes, assisted living, healthcare facilities. Uh, the state of Minnesota, I've listed their, their website. Um, there's specific information on all of those scenarios out there and, and when in doubt you call them, all right? And uh, I can help you with that number too, if you'd like. Um, cooperatives do not need CRPs. I also include a couple links to the CRP instructions. They are, detailed and should give you the information you need. But as always, you know, you can uh, call me if you have questions I'll, and I'll attempt to help you out. So quick tips, property owners or managers are required to issue one CRP to each adult renter by January 31st, 2020. If the tenants move out prior to that, um, you give them their CRP. Say someone moves out June 30th and they were there from January 1st or even from February 1st, you give them a CRP on the spot. If you're not very, you know, if you feel you're not uh, very organized, that might be the best way to do it so you don't forget. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, if you're self managing, you uh, practice, you know, some people practice what I call uh, napkin 
accounting, uh, back of the napkin where you're, you're kind of winging it, not the best strategy. Um, you know, there are software programs out there that are really inexpensive, Appfolio, Buildium, to name a couple that you could use and it, it would get you a little more organized or think about hiring a property manager. Uh, the, the cost is much less than what you think. So um, if you don't, you know, next one, if you don't have a foreign address, you can go to the last address on file and I'll tell you what, hold on to the letter, hold on, you know, take a picture of the envelope in case you know, someone comes back and says, you didn't even try to send it to me. Well, you want to have proof and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, here's the thing that a lot of people don't know. You must keep a copy of all 2019 CRPs until February 1st of 2023. I guarantee you most people don't know that. And it's something just to be aware of. I say take an electronic copy, put it into your property management software or Google Drive for free. And you say, well, I don't trust Google. Well, Dropbox. Um, Apple, I mean, there's a million different, well, not a million, but there's probably a dozen free ones that you could find and, and store or print them out and put them in your file cabinet if that's the way you want to do it. So uh, I'm not judging if that's your, if that's your philosophy, that's your approach, whatever you do to stay organized, that's what you should do here too. So, okay. So what's new? What's new in 2019? Well, it used to be married couples were considered like one entity, one adult. So you'd send a married couple just one CRP. Now you have to split it. So you say if, if the married couple paid $12,000 in rent, each of the persons would get a CRP for half of that amount. So 6,000 each. All right. Um, the, the, the property manager can do this for you. We, our property management company does this for all our, our clients. So they don't have to worry about it. We just take care of it. We send them all out and it's something they don't even need to think about. Um, there are some nuances there that which I'll talk about in a second, but uh, it's no problem. Um, in 2018, the 2018 form, keep in mind we're doing the 2019 form because it's for tax year 2019. The 2018 form had a thing where you had to calculate 17% of the rent paid. Um, you had to do this calculation and, and put that number on the form. And that's the number that the tenants use. You don't have to do that anymore. So that, 17% number or 0.17 is now gone. Um, there's something now that you can file this on e-services. Not really going to get into e-services today. I'm, you know, maybe we're going to talk about if you go on to the uh, Department of Revenue website, you can read about e-services. That's a separate video completely. Most people are not doing e-services. There's an electronic certification number on the CRP form. Uh, you can leave it blank if you're not using e-services. Uh, there are software that is available. There's software that's available from third party that you can use to uh, send out your CRPs. You can upload all your renter information if you want to use e-services in a format. Again, I'll do that in a separate video. Most people are not doing that yet, but I believe next year a lot of people will. You know, we have a, a program that we use. Um, basically it's mail merge where we take all our, our tenant info out of a uh, Excel spreadsheet, CSV file, and we put into uh, some mail merge and, and we populate the forms and we automatically email them out, which is awesome. It gets done in like seconds where it used to take us, you know, days of, you know, even if you were printing off labels or printing um, envelopes and stuff, it just took forever. So uh, great uh, efficiency there, especially like when, with us, it, we're, we're setting out, over a thousand every year. So uh, what constitutes rent? A lot of people ask this question. Um, basically this information comes from the Minnesota State Department of Revenue. So I put out a more easily digestible form. So you can look at, you know, what is rent for utilities or pets if included as part of rent? What does it not include? Does not include late charges or fees. Uh, does not include rent paid after December 31st does not include a garage or separate structure provided uh, as part of the rental agreement, uh, rent paid by charitable organizations. So look at this list and understand what that means. And the reason you need to know that is because if you overstate the amount, you could be penalized. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. So people ask this, what about caretaker credits? Well, on the form, and Scott is going to attempt to do this live uh, where he, grabs the form. All right. So here's the form. 
the uh, you know, on this form uh, on the form are two fields. One, you know, line one, renters share of rent paid. All right, so and I believe that you can see that here. Renters share of uh, rent paid. Okay, so in my example, I have uh, a couple people who have paid rent uh, in 2019. They were paying $1,000 a month, so $12,000 for the year, all right? $12,000 for the year. So you would put in line one, their rent, but they were also getting a rent reduction. So the rent was actually $1,200. Uh, they were getting a rent reduction of $200. So you would take that amount, $200 times 12, and you would put in line two, $2,400. So $12,000, line one, $2,400 in line two for a total of $14,400. That's the total rent. You have to add back in the monies that they got as caretakers. So seems simple enough, right? So that's the, uh, uh, but a lot of people forget about the caretaker, uh, the, the caretaker credit, and that is considered uh, part of the rent that's paid. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, you know, you could say if someone's being compensated for doing lawn, whatever the credit for that lawn service that they're doing, a lot of single family homes have the tenants doing lawn and, and you have to uh, provide a credit for fair market of those services. So uh, keep that in mind too. That's a separate topic that I did a video on with an attorney that you can watch in our, uh, on our YouTube channel if you'd like. So Again, if you wanted more information on the YouTube channel and all the other videos, or you want you know, me to you know, talk to me directly about those things, you know, please reach out. Uh, all right, so, so just keep in mind, any discounts you're giving for services, that's considered rent, you have to add back on the form. And I know, I know thousands of people are making that mistake, thousands. So. All right, so what if you bought or sold a property in 2019? This is another question I get all the time. Bought or sold in 2019. So if you sold a property, two options. You can give the buyer all the information, show the rent paid by each renter, the date, you know, how long they were a tenant um, for the time that you own the property, uh, or you can just give the CRP to the tenants, all right? A or B, all right? The US, if you sold the property, pick A or pick B, make sure you communicate that. Now, if you bought a property, if you purchased a property, uh, and the seller provided you with the rent amount uh, when they owned the property, then you can put the total amount that the renter paid for the year, the total amounts rented for the year. The seller did not provide you with the rent amount uh, while the sent seller owned the property and the, the period the tenant lived there. Uh, then you just simply enter the total amount the renter paid you while you own the building and the number of months, all right? You fulfilled your obligation. So, and, and trust me, this has come up with us more times than I, I care to admit, where the uh, seller doesn't want to do it, the buyer doesn't want to do it, and they get in this big, you know, Hatfield McCoy feud about who's going to send out the CRP, and then we just do it because, you know, I'm not going to live to be a thousand years old, so we just want things to go away and be happy, right? All right, penalties for non-compliance. This is important. So, if you do not give CRPs to your renters, you may have to pay a hundred dollar penalty for each CRP not issued. Okay. $100 for each CRP not issued. Get these out, folks. You got about, I don't know, eight days at this point, whatever. Whenever you watch this, January 31st, 2020. If you missed a date, send it out anyhow. You send it, if it's February 5th and you're watching this video, just get them out in the mail. So people, oops, sorry, email them, mail them. Um, you know, no one's, I don't think there's a, the, the, the economics of going after landlords for this hundred dollars. So they just want people to send it out and they want there to be a little bit of sting to make sure that you're doing it. Uh, now this part, now letter, uh, the, the, the second you know, on the yellow here, I want you to focus on this because this is important. I guarantee you people aren't thinking about this either. You know how we talked about that 
that uh, caretaker credit. If you overstate the amount of rent constituting property tax, uh, you may also have to pay a $100 penalty uh, or 50% of the overstatement, whichever is greater. Now notice they don't say anything about understatement, right? So if you're given a credit of $100 a month for caretakers and you omit it, I don't see anything where it says uh, understating that amount. Now your tenant might call you on it, um, but there, there is a penalty for overstating. So if the, if the caretaker credits $100 a month or $200 a month, don't put $400. There is a penalty for overstating it, okay? The state assumes if you overstate this, you're doing it intentionally. So keep that in mind, the $100 for missing the date. Like if you're late, just get them off. Like, again, I, you know, someone, I, I, I don't work for the state of Minnesota, but if I were a landlord and I missed the date by five days, but I did get them out and I was honest and rep, you know, reputable about it, I, I don't think they're going to penalize you. I, I hope not. I hope, I hope Tim Waltz and the state of Minnesota have more important and bigger, higher priorities than this. Could be wrong. Um, anyway, other info, homeowners, you can get a refund. These are the numbers. Verify these numbers, you know, from wherever you're watching this. Again, I'm not giving anybody accounting advice, but I want you to just be aware of the numbers. They usually index a little higher. I think last year, the 2018 number was a couple thousand less for this. So, uh, you know, if you're a homeowner, you must have a valid social security number to get the refund. Read through this. I think it's all useful stuff. Now, um, e-services, if you want more information on e-services, here are some websites you can go to. I will do, you know, they do a webinar, but it's full. I don't understand how a webinar can be full. Um, editorial comments, sorry, but you know, hopefully they'll post the videos of the webinars so that people can have access 24 seven. Regardless, Scott, your friend at Verde Property Management will do a video here uh, and uh, give you guys the information and I will uh, do that in the next two weeks. So. Uh, that's my commitment. If you have any questions, 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888. Uh, my name is Scott Picard. I'm with Verde Property Management. Appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. If, and like always, if I could be of further service, please let me know. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you.